okay, we're ready to move forward with Jonathan Allen. If you would, raise your hand and we'll get you a mic. Right here. Okay. Hey, John. Chris Womack, 42 in Birmingham. Uh, first off, how's the shoulder feeling and uh, how frustrating was it to miss so much time during spring practice? Oh, the shoulder's feeling great. Um, our rehab staff is amazing. Um, I've been doing rehab almost every day and it's been feeling really good. And I'm actually a couple weeks ahead of schedule. Um, it is a little frustrating to miss spring, but at the, at the same time, you got to recognize the bigger picture and the bigger goal. So that's what I just try to tell myself every day as I went to rehab and just try to stay focused on what the goal was. Right here. Jonathan, Joe Whalen, WBMA TV in Birmingham. As, as the elder statesman, do you feel like you're the voice of the defense this year? Uh, I want to say I'm the voice of the defense. I'll, I'll say I'm maybe one of the voices. I mean, there's so many people who are leaders on the team, like Eddie Jackson, Ruben Foster. Dalvin Thomas, we have, we have a bunch of guys who can lead, so I want to say I'm primarily the main voice. Hey, Jonathan, Jacques Duce, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Um, reflecting back on last year, how did you guys stop Leonard Fournette the way you did? Was it the game plan? Was it uh, just two weeks of preparation? I mean, how do you reflect back on that performance? Because no one else could do that. I felt like it was a combination of many things. Having the extra week definitely did help. Help get guys healthy, but um, it's just a pride thing. I mean, the coach—it was a simple game plan. We didn't run a lot of calls. It was just, it was just mano y mano. You know, you just had to take pride in what you do is dominating your box. So I feel like we did a good job of recognizing what the excellence was and upholding that standard. Hey, Jonathan, Scott Griffith, CBS 42. I, I just asked OJ, what is it about the business culture? And I know you were serious talking to you when you were getting recruited about academics and those kind of things. What is it about? the business culture and just the culture period at Alabama that makes some guys <clears throat> want to go there and flourish and then some guys not that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. There. <clears throat> um, probably the biggest thing is recognizing that it, it is a game and th there's no doubt in that, but it's also a business. You got to realize the business aspect. Um, the example Coach Saban always gives is you're your own CEO and how you portray yourself and the things you do is pretty much right in your resume. So you got to think about that every time you, you got to make a decision, you know, you're writing your own resume. So that's probably something that might turn some other guy's way, you know, it might not be as fun as somewhere like in Florida or something like that, but it's, it's a business aspect. But with that being said, we still have fun. We still get after it and we just have fun competing. Right here. Steve Nissen, WEAR, Pensacola. A lot of times after a team wins a championship, you don't see the same level of hunger the next year. Uh, what kind of signs are you seeing in terms of the level of hunger of this team? Um, I, see, I see a lot of hunger in this team. The biggest thing at Alabama, if you don't have hunger, you're not going to start next year. You know, Coach Saban's not going to do anything to the detriment of the team. So you, get, you, you have to come with it every, every game, every day, and prove why you deserve to be the starter. So as of that, I really haven't seen no problems with complacency this year. Up front. Tom and Eno, WBTM 13 in Birmingham. Off the field issues happen in college football. You guys have an off, you know, off the field issue that happened with Cam Robinson and Hootie Jones. As one of the leaders of the team, Obviously, I mean, you can't be everywhere. There's not much that you can actually tangibly do. But what, if anything, can you do in terms of support for those guys and maybe just trying to send the message that this just can't happen? Uh, as a, a message, as, as long as you have to coach Saban. So, I mean, whatever he sees fit is what we're going to do. But as support, I mean, I'm all, we're always there for our teammates. If they need anything, I'll be there for them. If they need me to pick them up from the airport, I'm there. So, I mean, they always have my number support-wise. But other than that, I mean, yeah, I mean, you just have to leave it up to Coach Saban. Right here. <coughs> you had a coaching change that motivated the team. How do you feel like Coach Venable is fitting in? I mean, what's the biggest difference in his coaching style and Coach Davis? You know, I feel like um, Coach Davis and Coach Dunbar are very similar. Um, we haven't had a lot of field, uh, um, work with them on the field, so I can't really tell you too much about that. But off the field, everything's been very smooth. I mean, he's picking, he's picking up our defense really quickly, so he's doing a good job of coaching the younger guys up and helping even the older guys understand what, what his policy and procedures are and what he needs to do and what he wants to establish as a D-line coach. <coughs> Jonathan, uh, O.J. Howard said that part of the reason this team stays hungry and wins consistently is the off-season workouts. What goes on in those workouts to produce these results? Because Nobody in the modern era wins at this rate. I, I, I would easily say that our off-season workouts are the hardest thing we do throughout the whole season. I mean, it really pushes you, not just physically, but mentally. It takes you to the wall, and you got to be able to get past it. And, and that, that really separates the men from the boys, as, as we say. So, you know, I, I feel like our off-season workouts really help 
prepare us for what's to come in the season. You know, if you if you can make it through our fourth quarter program, you could play on any you could play at any um, road team stadium easily. Over here, far left. Cody Coyle, KBTX TV College Station. Just how how tough is the the SEC West, man? What's the what's the slight margin of error from the top to the bottom every year? A slight margin of error is almost there's almost none. I mean, I feel like SEC West is the in my opinion, it's the best conference. It's the best conference. I mean, it, from top to bottom, every team is great. You can't take a slight on any team that we play. So, SC is, is not even just the West. The whole SEC is definitely is a hard is a hard conference to play. Back over here in the corner. Hey, Jonathan, um, how much are you going to miss Kirby Smart, or are you not really going to miss him? <laughs> oh, I'm going to definitely miss Kirby Smart, man. I, man, I, 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 I loved him, man. He was definitely family to me. I mean, I've been with him three years. You, you know, we're gonna we're definitely gonna miss him, but you can, you can't get mad for making what's best for his family. So I'm excited to see what he does. I'm just glad he didn't choose a team in the West. And uh, do you do you feel like that at LSU series has lost a little bit of luster? You guys have really dominated them the, the past few years. Oh no, there's definitely no less loss there. I mean, LSU every week, every time we go get ready to go into an LSU game, you know it's gonna be a violent physical game. So. That's, those are definitely the hardest practices we have throughout the whole year is getting ready for LSU. Right here to your right. Hey Jonathan, a, a follow-up on that. Where does Tiger Stadium rank as far as atmosphere, stadiums you've been in, road environments, that, that kind of thing? Oh, man. I, it will be top two, definitely. I mean, it's just such a hostile environment. But from a defensive perspective, we love that. I love going on the road. Defense loves going on the road. So, I mean, we, we just love that negative energy that they throw at us, and it just helps get us ready to play. When you were there two years ago, was that kind of a victory? Like, how did we, you know, do this? Or, I mean, because late, the fumble recovery and everything, things weren't looking good. This is one of the things you always got to just keep playing every down to the end of the game. You never assume that you lost a game, never assume that you won a game. So, I mean, that was just, that just put in perspective what we had to do to win, you know, and I was very proud of our team that game. Jonathan, talk a little bit about first game of the year, how you try to set the tone, get things started the right way, taking on USC in the Lone Star State. Coach Saban always talks about establishing identity, and the first game is the first opportunity to do that on a national level. So, you know, we're going to prepare like heck throughout the offseason to get our team and our players and our coaches and our staff ready, you know, to play the, at, a, at the best of our abilities that game. So we're excited to be able to play USC. That's a team we don't um, get to play very often. So we're excited. Last year, the defensive line, the, the amount of depth and talent was amazing. You lost some of those guys, obviously. What do you see in terms of the, the level at the line this year? Can it be what it was last year? Oh, we definitely feel that the level of the line could be what it was last year. Guys are going to have to step up into new roles and responsibilities. Now, they're going to they're gonna have to prove that they can do that. But I, I have the utmost confidence in our D-line that they'll be able to do that. Over here to your left. I, I, I want to go back to Bo Davis. I, I know. The relationship was so strong, it seemed, between the entire group and with Bo Davis. Just simply, how, how tough was that to see him leave? Oh, man, it was definitely tough. You never want to see, you know, your coach go out like that. But at the end of the day, it, it's a business. You know, you can't get too attached to one particular coach or player. I mean, even though it's sad to go, he'll still always be a close friend of mine. So, I mean, I hate to say it, but, I mean, it is what it is. You got to move on. We got a job to do, you know? Jonathan, Stephen Gunner, WSFA Montgomery. On the other side of the ball to sit and watch and go up against O.J. Howard. How has he developed through the years, and what do you see as a, as a player on the field and, and the teammate he is off the field? Oh, man, he's a great teammate off the field. Funny guy, always upbeat, gets everybody ready on our 630 runs off the field. On the field, he's definitely become a great blocker. You know, he's always been a great pass, um, pass runner. But his blocking has increased tremendously since he got here his freshman year. So that's probably one of the biggest improvements I've seen on him. After the season, there was a lot of speculation as to your ultimately There was a lot of things that turned back. Probably the biggest thing was my shoulder and just I mean, the depth of the draft, my shoulder. I mean, there was, there was a bunch of things. I, I, don't, I don't think I could point out one specific thing. But just talking to Coach Saban, we just made a decision that was best for me and my family. Over here to your left. Hey, Jonathan. Lee Benson from KAGS in College Station, Texas. I know you were part of that Alabama team a few years ago that played Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, now Trevor Knight's at Texas A&M. I'm wondering if you've thought about getting another shot at playing against Trevor Knight this upcoming fall. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, I heard he was at Texas A&M, but I mean, I'm not circling on our calendar or anything. 
like Coach Sammy said, it's, it's, it's another game. It's another team. If, if we focus too much on that team and we lose to another team, our season, you know, it could be over. So we're not focusing on one team more than any other team. You know, we're preparing for each team the same way. Right here. Jonathan, you talked about how uh, you think this defensive line this season is going to be solid once again. But what is it that you guys do with the younger players to get them ready for a heavy rotation and be, be ready for day one? You just try to adapt them to your culture. I know for me personally, coming from high school to college was a big transition. It's just not the same intensity. So once they get here, you got to tell them the severity of the situation. They got to catch on to the place because they got to eat right. They got to do everything right to be able to play this year. So I feel like our young guys have done a good job of understanding that. You know, so I feel like they're going to be ready for the season. They just got to understand that it's time to get it. You know. Back here in the middle. Clay, you're from WDHN. You guys always praise about staying the course, staying focused, and you prove that time and time again. Do you ever get tired of staying hungry and uh, trusting the process? And if so, how do you fix it? Well, my first two years here, people got tired of it and didn't want to continue on the process and we lost. So when you do it right, you get the results you want and everybody wants to win. So it just depends on what's important to you. If coming here and winning is important to you, it's, it's really not hard to stay on the process because that's what you want to do. When we talk to you guys in Tuscaloosa, sometimes we, we bring up just the fan interest and the pressure that it takes to play for this, this team and this program. When you walked into the lobby today, what went through your mind and was kind of people hanging around just to see you guys for a few minutes of media days, the epitome of the attention that you guys have to play under? I, I just love our fan base. I mean, they couldn't put more pressure on us than Coach Saban does. So we're not worried about that. Coach Saban puts more pressure on us than anyone could ever could. So we, we, we love our fans. I mean, just the support they show us is, is tremendous. Coming home from the national championship, they were outside of our air, airport cheering us on. So I feel like we have the best fan base in the nation. So we just love them. And any chance we get to give back, we, we love to do it. I was surprised. I didn't think there was going to be that many people there. But I mean, I enjoyed it. You know, I always love seeing the fans. Back here. Hey, Jonathan, uh, can you go back to the national championship game and just kind of when it sunk in that you guys had won it? what that feeling was like, and how long were you allowed to celebrate winning? Probably the first thing I thought about after we won that championship, I looked back to our summer and all the runs we did and just thought about how worth it it was, you know? Um, it, it was great. I mean, it's just one of the things you always play for, but you just can't really experience until you do it, you know? Um, for how long it, we got to celebrate. We got to celebrate it for a good while, but for the guys who are coming back, it's a new team, so it's time for us to establish our own identity and get on our own path and try to, you know, create new memories for our own. Back over here to you. Hey, Jonathan, Vince Lennon, a.k.a. Montgomery. Talk a little bit about O.J. Howard and his return for his senior year and how reassuring that is that he's delaying an NFL career potentially to stick around for another year here at Tide. Oh, man, he's definitely a special player. I would, you know, as a team, we were super happy when he decided to return for us. You know, we felt like he was making a good decision um, for himself. You know, we, we, we're glad, glad he's back. You know, he's such a versatile weapon that he can't do nothing but be happy that he's coming back. You know, he, he can help us in so many ways. Eddie Jackson also here today. What have you seen in terms of his development and, and what level you feel like he can take it to this season? Oh, definitely. Probably the biggest thing that I've seen improvements on him is his leadership ability. He definitely makes other defensive backs around him better, and, that, and, that, and that's so huge. Um, that's probably one of the biggest things Coach Saban preaches is affecting other people. You can affect one person every day, and if everybody does that, then we'll have a successful team. And I definitely see that in Eddie. Athletically, he, he's a freak. I mean, you don't see too many people be able to do the things he's done. So he's definitely a, a bonus to have on this defense. Jonathan's the third year in a row that the, the offense is going through a quarterback battle. As a defensive guy on a, on a really, really staunch defense, how do you guys you know, view that quarterback battle? Is there a certain person you guys root for? They, they always say about winning the team, but when you're on the other side of the field, you know, how do you guys view it? It really doesn't affect us, to be honest with you. I mean, our goal is to attack the quarterback. So for us, it really doesn't matter who we have on the opposite side. And we say that because if Coach Saban has enough faith to name him the starting quarterback, then we have faith in him. So, I mean, we, we follow Coach Saban. So, if Coach Saban says, this is the guy we're going to go with, you're going you're gonna to surround him with support and all the other quarterbacks. I mean, they, they know, they know, you know, it's a, it's a competition. So, like I said, whoever Coach Saban picks, that's the guy um, we're going to support. Right back. Jonathan, right here. Uh, Noah Mandel, WTBY News Sport Dothan. What are the differences and similarities between Derrick Henry and Bo Scarborough? I feel like there's definitely a lot more similarities than differences. 
Um, I feel like Bo Scarborough might be a little more stocky, where Derek was a little more lengthier and could stride more. But I mean, both tremendous work ethics, hard, physical, um, monstrous back. So I'm, I'm super excited to see what Bo Scarborough can do for us this season. In regards to, to the quarterback battle, uh, this is going to be the third straight year you guys have a new starter. Um, so not a lot of playing experience when they get out there. But defensively, you guys have enough confidence in yourselves as the view kind of if they can perform against us in practice, then they can perform against any other defense? Oh, definitely. It's, it's always a competition. Even when we go out there for seven on seven, no matter what we do, it's always a competition. So, you, I mean, you see the quarterbacks and they're competing like crazy. And that's all you can ask for is a competitor. You know, not everybody's perfect. You're not always going to make the best passes. I'm not always going to make the tackle. So we're not expecting them to be perfect. We just we just want them to go out there and be fired up and be a competitor. That's all you can ask for. Any other questions? Well, well, can we get the mic, please? Just what, what Joe said just dawned on me. We always talk about offensive guys and what they look for in a quarterback. What is a defensive guy? look for, because he's on your team, obviously. Well, what are you looking for in a quarterback uh, to lead your team? I don't feel like there's something specific that I'm look, that we're looking for. But if you, if you like, you just want toughness in your quarterback. You want that um, presence about him. I, I can't really explain it. But you, you know when you see it. I feel like we found it last year, probably a little bit under halfway through the season. You just knew Jay Coker was it. I mean, I can't really explain what it is. but. It's just that competitiveness. You always love to be around competitors. So if my quarterback's a competitor, I'll easily go with him. We have time for one more question. Okay, thank you.